Monday Night Baseball on ESPN presented by Taco Bell. It is a beautiful evening here in Los Angeles after a gorgeous day. Look at this scene here at Dodger Stadium and what a rivalry we've got. One of the best in baseball. The San Francisco Giants are here to take on their arch rivals, the Los Angeles Dodgers. The series began on Friday night. Bumgarner, Kershaw, but it was Kike Hernandez who stole the show, hitting not one but two home runs off Madison Bumgarner. Clayton Kershaw was terrific, and the Dodgers win by a score of 7 to 3. Then last night, Johnny Cueto, who has been nailed so far as a Giant, perfect into the fifth, seven and a third outstanding innings, and the Giants win by a score of 4 to 3. Hi everybody welcome to Los Angeles glad you're with us Dan Schulman Jessica Mendoza and Aaron Boone always fun when the Dodgers play the Giants let's start with the Giants and one of the big stories for them so far this year Booney has been their offense has been really really good it really has and scary to think that a team that's won three out of six world championships I think this could be their best team to date on paper and a lot of it has to do with their outstanding offense. It's a difficult lineup to deal with up and down. There's length in it. It's a team that does not strike out and it's also a team that's hitting a number of home runs already early in the season. Second in the National League to the Colorado Rockies. There's not a lot of places to go because they put the ball in play, which has been a recipe for success in the postseason. And they'll face a guy tonight who has been really, really good in his first two starts in the major leagues from Japan now with the Dodgers right-hander Kenta Maeda. Well, and Dan, he's been an early success story, and it's not so much because he's flashy. He's just very precise. And what I specifically see with him, so tough to square the ball up from him as a hitter because he mixes four different pitches very well. He's got his fastball, his slider, his curveball, and his changeup, but look at the mile per hour difference. He'll go anywhere from 70 on that curveball to 92 on his fastball, and he will hit every single point in between. Very difficult to be able to get the barrel on it. Now, best thing he does, though, is how he utilizes those pitches. Look at earlier in the week against Paul Goldschmidt. That's his two-seam fastball. Look at the tunnel that he's using. Then you follow it up with the changeup. Same exact window, but then he drops it off the table, able to fool some of the best hitters already this season. He's exciting Dodger fans. He's exciting his teammates as well. One of them, Clayton Kershaw, standing by with a Buster Olney. Clayton, what have you seen so far from Kenta Maeda? Uh, just uh, an extreme ability to spend the breaking balls. Uh, he can just throw strikes with them, and he can bounce them for strikeouts. And um, he's not going to walk guys. He's going to make you get hits, and he can really uh, command the strikes on this fastball. And uh, it's fun to watch. You know, he's going to compete well. How would you describe his personality in the clubhouse in the dugout? He's awesome. Yeah, he really, uh, you know, for not being able to speak English, he really fits in really well. And. Uh, he's trying, he works out, he's trying to figure out the American lifestyle, and uh, he's a ton of fun to be around. Clayton, thanks. Dan, back to you. All right, Buster, thank you. Clayton Kershaw enjoying having Kenta Maeda as a teammate. The Giants are enjoying having Jeff Samarja, especially after what he did in this last start. Eight very strong innings Tuesday in a win over Colorado. It's Dodger Stadium. Not a cloud in the sky. One of the best rivalries in baseball. The Dodgers and the Giants are coming up.
Two weeks into the season, the Dodgers and Giants, after tonight, will have already played seven times. The Giants have taken four of the first six, took three or four in San Francisco last week. They've split the first two here in Los Angeles, heading in to this game here tonight. Happy belated birthday to Bruce Bochy. Celebrated his 61st birthday yesterday just the way he wanted to with a win. The Giants four and the Dodgers three last night here at Dodger Stadium as the Dodgers take the field led by right-hander Kenta Maeda about to make his third start for the Dodgers. He has not given up a run so far in the first two going six innings in each of those two starts. Let's take a look now at the starting lineup that Maeda will face. The Giants starting lineup is presented by Taco Bell and a lot of familiar names including a former MVP at Buster Posey. Well this is a deep lineup Dan but no one epitomizes it better than Buster Posey. He hits for average he hits for power now he has been hitless his last 15 at bats but I think he's going to turn it around then you swing on down to the bottom of the lineup and Angel Pagan he leads the NL with 13 runs and this has been their best hitter in 2016. He's really liking that nine spot. As mentioned, the third start of the season for Maeda, one of the top pitchers in Japan over his eight year career there, signed an eight year deal with the Dodgers. And he has not given up a run in either of his first two starts. If, if he goes six or more innings and does not allow a run in this start, he will become the first pitcher in the modern era. That's since 1900 to ever do that. Oh, and by the way, he's also hit a home run and stung a couple of other line drive outs in his first two starts. He has become very, very popular very quickly with his manager and his teammates here in Los Angeles. Dave Roberts, first year manager of the L.A. Dodgers. Booney, we had a chance to spend some time in his office uh, before the game today. He seems awfully comfortable. He really does. And, uh, you know, he talked about being in his infancy as a major league manager, but he seems to just handle everything like he's been doing this for 20 years. I think the last few years, as a coach, he's really prepared for this moment. He's reached out to a lot of different managers for advice, for mentoring, and he's hit the ground running here in Los Angeles. It's a outstanding culture right now in that clubhouse, and a lot of that has to do with the tone that Mr. Roberts has, has set. He's an energy guy, Kenta Maeda, six foot, just 150 pounds. And again, not overpowering. He's just talked about in the open, not overpowering, but he can really spot the ball. He throws four pitches, can throw them all for strikes. You heard the glowing scouting report Clayton Kershaw gave about Maeda. And now we're ready to go. And it's a late afternoon game on the West Coast, and you know what that means. Shadows. So it's going to be a little bit difficult at the outset for the hitters, you would think, as Denard Spann steps in and he takes up and away ball one. Well, guys, what are you dealing with if you're standing in the batter's box and this is going on? It's an issue, and and as a hitter, you're aware of it all day long. And and when that pitcher's in the sunlight and that hitter's eye is in the sunlight and you're in the shade, it's just difficult to recognize spin and all sorts of of things. You're kind of just assuming where that ball is going for the first half of this game. Span signing a free agent deal with the Giants in the offseason, leading off playing center. Angel Pagan has moved to left and is hitting down in the order. And the shadows about halfway between home plate and the mound. They will creep out towards the mound. And that's a great angle, Dan, because you can see how it starts light, gets dark. And to Booney's point, the biggest thing is, is you still are able to pick up the ball. It's the spin. So picking up the red seams and where it's going, you lose it. So what you're going to see is just later reactions from the hitters. Here's the 2-1 on the way. And a swing and a foul back by Span. Two and two, and, and you talk to players too. It's not just the hitters who struggle with it; the fielders can struggle picking up the ball off the bat. A absolutely, and what helps a little bit for the fielders today is is the background, meaning the stands on the lower part of the field and behind home plate are in the shadows. 
so and the hitters coming out of the shadow so that helps a little bit but with these light seats for the Dodgers it can definitely make it tough and your concentration has to be high 2-2 two, two, and an awkward swing at a breaking ball by Span to strike out. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN is presented by Taco Bell's new Quesalupa. It has everyone talking. What are you waiting for? And in part by Norwegian Cruise Line, Feel Free, and Farmers Insurance. See unbelievable but true tales of coverage at Farmers.com slash Hall of Claims. Beautiful day in Los Angeles just underway Giants and Dodgers here's the Giants second baseman Joe Panic takes outside ball one guys that last pitch was a great example. Yeah. I mean Denard's that was a center cut slider that was really right down the middle of the plate and he swung at it like he walked into a room with the lights on knew what he was going to get and somebody turned the lights out on him. Curveball misses outside ball two. Here's a look at that swing from Denard Span. It's like he kind of sees it and you see that just kind of late survival mode swing. There's a great look and he just is late essentially on that slider that's really in the heart of the play. That's not a nasty pitch by any means. Just off the edge says Alfonso Marquez the home plate umpire and Maeda who has walked just one through his first two starts is behind three and zero on panic. Dodgers winning seven to three on Friday night Giants coming back with a four to three win last night both teams have a record of seven and five on the season. <laughs> Waiting on deck Buster Posey. He suffered a bruised foot a foul tip off the bat of Chase Utley last Sunday missed a couple of days was hitting great before the injury hasn't gotten it going since he's come back as Maeda walks panic. Well, uncharacteristically behind the first two hitters here to start this game. One thing we've noticed with Maeda, his first two outings, and really throughout his career in Japan, is it's almost like he's playing catch out there. There's not a lot of, it doesn't look like there's a lot of effort, and as a result, his misses tend to be out of the zone or out of the trouble spot or mistakes to hitters, if you will. There's a challenge in a Buster Posey as, though, as mentioned he's struggling over his last 15 and there's an awkward swing couldn't check it. Oh and one. I spoke to Kenta Maeda Friday through his translator and asked him about OK you've watched video on the Giants batters like who's standing out to you and he's well of course first he's like they're all good but that Posey guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like he he can do it all. He said he can have that powerful swing and then he can adjust and just poke it through the gap if he wants to. And Maeda jumps out in front 0 and 2. Posey has been a rookie of the year a batting champion a comeback player of the year an MVP and a three time World Series champion. As a number of his teammates have as well of course with the Giants winning it all in 2010 12 14. And those who believe in the the even number karma the even numbered year karma or uh, success that the Giants have had are hoping that that follow suit again here in 2016. Out of play. He's got that look on his face right yeah. now like I can't see anything. And, and <laughs> you just kind of get in survival mode there especially with two strikes and you know my is just going to expand that zone a little bit. He's throwing all fastballs to him at this point so he hasn't even seen a breaking ball. I would think maybe within this next pitch or two you might try and tempt him off the plate with a breaking ball that he has not seen. Posey's view. A roller to short only plays to first Seeger in time to get him two down. Panic takes second. Well he went to that slider there off the plate and Posey's a little bit out in front of it. It's off the plate and rolls over this ball. And Corey Seeger does a nice job of surrounding this ball as you see Posey fooled out in front as that sliders breaking away off the plate but Corey Seager understanding that Posey's running knows he's got plenty of time to surround this ball has a little trouble with the transfer but still a very true and accurate throw to get Posey. So runner at second two down after Posey is retired and now Hunter Pence will be the batter hitting 244 with a couple of home runs. 
And eight for 17 so far this year with the runners in scoring position. If you're a fan of Aaron's boondoggle, and really, who isn't a fan of Aaron's boondoggle? <laughs> this is where Aaron. I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> Am I making it obvious here? But Maybe. stay tuned for the batting stance and the swing and of somebody of somebody who's <laughs> in this game. <laughs> that might be unique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. Been such a huge part of this Giants team. That's about as high up as you can roll the pen. That's right there. That's above the knee. Yes it is <laughs> looking for some thigh pads or yeah. some knee pads yeah. under all that. And Maeda who's already walked one in the inning is behind three and oh. Third hitter he's behind too and this is a spot here where he won't give in. He understands the shadows and the hitters are having a little bit of a difficult time but three oh not that you want to get to Brandon Belt by any means but you're not going to groove anything here to Hunter Pence with a runner in scoring position. He's also gone six times with that four seam fastball. It's not characteristic for him to go up in the zone. He's usually drilling the lower half of the zone. He's not afraid to go upstairs. Maeda's first start was at San Diego. Six innings, five hits, no runs. His second start was here against Arizona. Six innings, five hits, no runs. Got a win in the first game, got a no decision in the second game. Three one. Check the swing and a curveball down and away. And Maeda's walked more batters this inning than he walked in his first two starts combined. First baseman number nine, Brandon Belt. So that'll bring Yasmani Grandal out to the mound, and Maeda can speak just enough English to talk pitching on the mound and Grandal has learned a little bit about how to talk about the certain pitches just the names of different pitches in Japanese so evidently they can communicate well enough when they need to and one of the things to watch tonight is this is the first time Grandal is actually catching Maeda including spring training he's obviously caught him in the bullpen and and has a relationship with him but with the injury Grandal suffered in spring training and early part of this season first time they're working together Brandon Belt is the batter. And that's something Dave Roberts talked about with us. He was interested in seeing how this relationship would, would manifest itself tonight. He was confident that it would work well, but. And how comfortable he has been with A.J. Ellis. Yes. And that's probably one of A.J.'s biggest strengths is the fact that he's able to calm a pitcher, get on the same page with them very easily. Guys, Grandall actually got uh, a placard that he keeps in his locker early in spring training with all the Japanese words for each of the individual pitches, and he has them down so that if he goes to the mound and he wants to suggest a curveball, a fastball, he can do that. But A.J. Ellis told me that Maeda actually can tell the catcher fastball, curveball in English. So they're working on the communication right now. They're just working on the command for Maeda. Very atypical given what we have all seen from him in his first two starts. Well, especially the, the swings we've seen from the Giants hitters thus far. It's not like they're seeing the ball very well. If he gets it anywhere near the strike zone, he's probably going to get some good swing and misses now because of the shadows. Missed again. And you can see the frustration the way he kind of snapped his glove at the return toss and exhaling deeply on the mound. This is not what he's been used to over his first two starts and that curveball which we've seen a few times we saw him start a hitter with it and throw it behind in the count. That's been a pitch that typically so far this season has been a pitch he can go to for a free strike almost. So far has not been able to flip it in there. I think that's where he's kind of shaking his head a little bit like man that's a pitch that I usually have in my back pocket that if I need to get back in account I can flip that breaking ball in there. And second Joe panic at first Hunter Pence. A lot of pitches a couple of walks issued by Maeda here in the first inning belt will be hacking on anything close. And he skies one into shallow center field. Peterson racing in will make the catch not routine out there. 
But he stays with it and that will retire the side. No damage done against Maeda. He said he had it and he did. Giants don't score. Dodgers coming up when we come back. For Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, the Dodgers and the Giants. The Giants lead a couple of men on at the top of the first. The Dodgers are coming up this half inning. The Dodgers are fifth in the National League in the early going and runs scored per game, just over five runs per game. And the guy who's going to get it started re-signed with the Dodgers in the offseason, just Chase Utley. Yeah. Or Aaron, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Aaron. Chase is off yeah. to a great start, leading off for Dave Roberts, and has had a lot of success in his career against Samarja. Home run, several extra base hits against him, but swinging the bat extremely well early. And Adrian Gonzalez in the four hole. What more can you say, Mr. Consistent? This guy has been rock solid his entire career. Just you know what you're going to get out of him year after year. Nine seasons now with 20 plus homers, and usually around 300. The Dodger lineup is presented by Taco Bell. Utley, Seeger, and Turner against Jeff Samarja, making his third start of the season. And his second one, which was Tuesday night at Colorado, was terrific. He was throwing hard. Eight innings, six hits, two runs. Walk two, struck out five. Velocity was routinely up in the mid 90s. Samarja signing a five year, $90 million contract. The Giants spent some money in the offseason. A lot of it on Samarja, even more on Johnny Cueto, who's off to a good start. He was terrific last night here. Utley skies one in foul territory, first base side. Belt didn't see it. Now he finds it and makes the catch. And this is going to be an adventure for a couple of innings, not just for the hitters, but for the fielders as well. Well, we saw Jock Peterson to end the first inning and it took a while for Brandon Belt to kind of find this and again just dealing with that background and the shadows he was able to finally locate it and make the play but that pitch was a great look at what's been so effective for Samarja in the early going and that's that cut fastball that thing was riding in right on the corner and in on the hands to get that weak pop out from Otley. Now Corey Seager. The young shortstop, one of the top prospects in all of baseball, hit a home run last night. A two run shot off Javier Lopez. Seeger, the younger brother of Seattle's Kyle Seeger. And a big shortstop. 6'4, uh, really has the kind of size where some people wonder if he's eventually going to move to third, but right now they love everything about this kid. They do. And that last pitch, Dan, the splitter, that is huge for Samarja. If he can get that going with his cut fastball, Booney, be able to ride these. Right lefties especially inside and then come back with that. Belt unassisted two down. And especially with the shadows because you got to understand and even Seeger right now is is. Look at the fastball first pitch gets it in for a strike and he comes back with the cutter. And then he comes back with the split and this is exactly where Seeger 
talked to him pregame. This is what he was expecting for him to come inside, but then to be able to have that split, something off speed, something not inside, move away from him. And the split's a big pitch for him as we look at the repertoire, the four and the two seam fastball, slider, cutter, and the splitter. But in his first two starts where he's been outstanding, the split has not shown up for him. He's had really no feel. He's been pitching largely with that four seam, two seam, and cut fastball. That's what's been so effective for him. So if he gets that split going along with it, something that he's routinely thrown in his career 10, 15, even 20% of the time, you're right, Jess. Uh, that makes him upper echelon. Well, you look at some of the changes for Samarja from last year to this year as Justin Turner steps in for the Dodgers. Samarja did not have a good year last year, had an ERA of almost five, gave up more hits, runs, and home runs than anybody in baseball. Still signed a, a lucrative deal to go to San Francisco. But he's gone to a league which theoretically is easier to pitch in because there's no DH. He's gone from a good hitter's park. Uh, in U.S. Cellular Field to a good pitcher's park for his home games at AT&T. And he's gone from what was last year a bad defensive team with the White Sox to what looks like a pretty good defensive team for the Giants. So there are a lot of reasons to suspect his numbers will be better this year. And probably the biggest Achilles heel for any pitcher is their mindset. So to go through a season like Samarja went through last year, I don't know if there's a better pitcher that can come back with the confidence and and that's Jeff. I mean, you talk to him, and he has a chip on his shoulder about what happened last year. And he really believes, especially look at the numbers and the ranks, just from the White Sox to defense to this year, he knows who's behind him, and he pitches with confidence. I think you had the perfect storm of events last year, guys. You had him just kind of get into a little bit of a rut. I think at times he might have been tipping his pitches. I, I think people knew it was coming in that ballpark with the poor defense. And it just kind of spiraled into a very difficult year for him. I think coming over to this organization, I think he's poised for a big year. 2-2 Two -two pitch hit in the air to deep right center field and caught by Pence just before he almost collided with Span. Good play by Pence dealing with the elements and the Dodgers go in order in the bottom of the first. No score at the end of an interesting inning here in Los Angeles.
Underway here in the top of the second inning. No score between the Giants and Dodgers as Maeda misses just outside of ball one to Giants third baseman Matt Duffy. Duffy finished second in National League Rookie of the Year voting last year behind the winner Chris Bryant of the Cubs. 295 drove in 77 runs on the season. Peterson drifting into right center hauls it in for the first out. If you got your sunglasses, you'd best be using them, especially in the outfield here right now. It'll all settle down in a couple of innings. The batter now is Brandon Crawford. What a year he had last year for the Giants, winning a silver slugger and a gold glove. The 21 home runs, that's a career high. Drove in 84, that was a career high. And just last week, had a game winning home run, a walk off home run against the Dodgers in that series they had back in San Francisco. That was the game where Ross Stripling of the of the Dodgers in his major league debut took a no hitter into the eighth inning and then got pulled at 100 pitches by Dave Roberts after issuing a walk and Trevor Brown then immediately hit a two run homer to tie the game and then an extra innings Crawford hit a home run to win it. And there was a lot of initial criticism to Dave Roberts first year manager and. I think a lot of fans wanted obviously Stripling to see it, especially hindsight when you saw the result. But I think a, a big time decision for him to make the right one and not get caught up in the motion, which he talked to us before the game about. Yeah, he said he took all the emotion out of obviously he never could have anticipated what would transpire during the game. But he said his mind was made up before the game. This is the limit. This is as far as he's going to go. And he never didn't even sound like he ever wavered at all in his well, decision. What made it a simple decision, frankly, was the fact that it was the eighth inning. And, and he was at 100 pitches. And you're talking about a guy coming off a of Tommy John surgery who's probably never pitched over 100 pitches in a game in the minor leagues. The best case scenario, had he finished the game off, would have been 130, 35 pitches. And there's zero chance. Right. You're going to do that not only with a rookie pitcher in his first start of the year, but probably even a veteran pitcher. I had is still frustrated. Tried to flip in that curveball at two and one and missed badly. There's a pitch lined foul down the right side. Full count. April the eighth, Dodgers and Giants in San Francisco, and Stripling, who was not even really on the radar in spring training, but won the fifth starter's job out of the spring for the Dodgers. What does he do? Seven and a third, no hit innings in his major league debut. But when he hit 100 pitches after his fourth walk of the game, Dave Roberts took him out. Fifth round pick back in 2012. Stripling pitched pretty well in his second start as well. And with all the injuries the Dodgers have had, man, is he a, a lifesaver right now for them at the back end of that rotation? There's a fly ball into left center, and ooh, everything's an adventure. That's Howie Kendrick out there in left field, making his second start in left field this year with Utley at second. And Turner at third Kendrick's moving around some second some third and some left and by all accounts he looks pretty comfortable out there. Well I think though what we've been seeing with all fly balls being hit is just later reactions I mean, you kind of hold your breath there for a second on balls hit the center right and now even left field because the shadows not only play a part for the hitters but for these fielders too but how he handling a pretty tough one. You saw Peterson hustling over just in case. Now a curveball for a strike to Jeff Samarja. Bruce Bochy when everybody's when Buster Posey's in the lineup and everybody's healthy hits the pitcher eighth now and Angel Pagan ninth so that they've got speed at the bottom and at the top Pagan hitting in front of a, a position player a hitter as opposed to in front of a pitcher and Pagan has accepted it is thriving has scored 13 runs in 12 games already he'll lead off the third after Samarja strikes out to end the second no score here in L.A.
Night Baseball on ESPN, presented by Taco Bell. Dan Schulman, Jessica Mendoza, Aaron Boone, Buster Olney with you here at Dodger Stadium. Bottom of the second, no score. Final game of the series with the Dodgers winning on Friday night, the Giants winning last night. Jeff Samarja retiring the Dodgers in order in the first. And we'll face Adrian Gonzalez to begin the second. Gonzalez off to a good start. As consistent as just about any hitter in baseball. Year after year, you got a pretty good idea what the numbers are going to be. On deck is Yasiel Puig, who's off to a great start this season. Gonzalez. On that pitch, Aaron looked like he was taken all the way at 0-1. He never had the bat on his shoulder. Knees weren't bent at all. Looked like he just wanted to look one over, just maybe to see the ball a little bit better. Oh two. Dan. Adrian Gonzalez is a guy who who's watches lots of video on pitchers, studies catchers and their tendencies. And with it being so difficult to see where he did swing at the first pitch, maybe it was one where he just said, hey, I've got to really concentrate on seeing this ball and reacting to it properly. One two bouncer backs up belt Samarja over to cover one down. So that'll bring up Yasiel Puig in his first couple of years, a mixture of potential and frustration at times for the Dodgers, but by all accounts, He's not only playing better, his attitude has been better, he's on time, he's working hard, he's accepting whatever role he's been given. And Dave Roberts seems thrilled with what he's getting from Puig. And Dave Roberts probably deserves some of the credit. It just seems he's been able to connect with the ACL Puig on a, on a certain level. Well, you told us an example of just, you know, even in the other last night, the game he didn't play in. He came up to him in the middle of the game and just said, hey, I'm here if you need me. And this might have been a guy a year ago that would have checked out at that point. And I think it's just keeping that relationship going because it is still early. But the biggest thing, Dan, that I see with Puig, especially because offensively, at the end of the day, they want him to hit. He looks comfortable. And I think there was a point last season where he just looked like he was thinking way too much. And that is not Yasiel Puig. He's someone that reacts. He's very smooth. He's got a lot of rhythm. When he's doing that, he's, he's going good. Hitting 357 so far, an on base percentage of 449 through the first two weeks of the season. Over the last three years, the numbers have dipped. A lot of injuries last year as well for Puig. Had some hamstring trouble that cost him a couple of stints on the DL. Big swing and a miss there. That's that cut fastball from Samarja that he'll start on the plate, outer half, and at 92 miles an hour just kind of disappears. Off the plate away. See that set up? That's 92 miles an hour. That starts out a strike on the outer half and finishes off the plate. That's been a weapon for Samarja so far. And a swing and a miss at a high fastball at 96 for out number two. And Jess highlighted earlier talking about Kenta Maeda and working off the same plane. Well, he follows up that cut fastball off that same window that breaks off the plate. And now says, all right, I'm going to go back to the same plate, but this time I'm going to keep it on the plate just in case Puig's discipline tells him to lay off this pitch. But at 96 at the top of the strike zone overpowers Yasiel Puig, as and, you see. And you see it with the bat path. Yep. I mean, he swung right under it because he's trying to stay on that, expecting it to cut away from him. Two down, and here's Yasmani Grandal, the Dodger catcher. Missed some time with a forearm injury, just came back on Tuesday. Two for seven with a couple of doubles so far. There's that Ooh. cutter, but to the lefty, it's in under his hands. Yeah. And a swing and a miss there. That's that, a great location. That's remote control style right <laughs> yeah. there. That's a little turbo action on it. Man. I love it underneath the hands of these lefties because he has that any lower. And that's a sweet spot, but and you can see Posey when he's looking for that cut fastball, he wants it up and he wants it. Hey, right here. You almost have to know what's coming to be able to hit it. Two one on the way. And it's just high ball three. 
You guys have seen examples of this during this at bat, how Buster Posey is slowing down Jeff Samarja. Samarja told me yesterday, that's something that gets him into trouble moving too fast, and Buster will just take his time, give the sign, pause a little bit between pitches. And a base hit into right center for Grandal. First base runner of the night for the Dodgers. Let's take a look at the MLB calendar tomorrow night on ESPN's Monday Night Baseball. We talk about the Giants and Dodgers being one of the best rivalries around. How about the Cubs and the Cardinals? John Lackey and Mike Leake, the pitching matchup tomorrow night. Wednesday Night Baseball, presented by Hancock Tire, the Tigers and the Royals. Another good divisional rivalry. And then one week from tonight, we will be in Houston as the Astros host the Red Sox. The Astros picking up a 5 4 win over Detroit today. Jose Altuve homered again, his fourth of the season. Here's Howie Kendrick, as mentioned, in left field tonight. His second start in left field this season, the 22nd start in left field in his career. And Dave Roberts again, just glowing praise about Kendrick and his desire to do whatever is needed of him whether it's second base third base left field whether it's hitting up in the lineup down in the lineup said he came to spring training with all his gloves said all right I'll play wherever and you got to remember at the time too this outfield for the Dodgers was stacked I mean they had enough players between Andre Ether Carl Crawford and obviously who they have now and Peterson and Puig it seemed like they had too many but with injuries Guys going down, Kendrick gets a shot and left and is doing it with a smile. Off the end of the bat, soft liner to second to win the inning. No runs, a base hit, and a man left. No score at the end of two. Coming up when we come back, Jessica Mendoza goes one on one with Dodger closer Kenley Jansen. Of the third earlier today before the game our Jess Mendoza had a chance to go one on one with Dodgers closer Kenley Jansen. All right your home country is Curacao. Tell me your favorite thing to do there. My favorite thing to do there is fishing. All right biggest fish he's ever caught like come on like big size. Uh, probably a big yellow fin probably this big I, I cut so you know just start to fish more often now I just got a boat and start fish so it's, it's been just beginning. All right, you speak four different languages. Can you tell me hello in your three other languages besides English, Dutch, Spanish, and Pabamiento? Start with Dutch. Hoe gaat het? Alles goed. Hey, conta, wat op bong. Spanish, hola, como estas? Está bien. And then English, hi, how you doing? <laughs> awesome. Um, favorite movie? Favorite movie, Friday. Friday, and you're a big movie person. Yeah. Love doing movies. All right, favorite meal? Favorite meal, can't go wrong with a fried chicken. Favorite sport outside of baseball? Favorite sport outside of baseball would be NBA. NBA favorite player? Shaquille O'Neal. All right, so you debuted as a catcher. Biggest thing you miss about catching? Biggest thing I miss as, as a catcher is throwing the guys from the knees out a second. Yeah, um, best thing you love about pitching? Best thing I love about pitching is, I mean, obviously strikeouts. It's, it's fun, especially you get, you know, guys like who can do damage in you, like Trout and those guys, two holes, and you can get them. That's really fun. Awesome, cool. Thanks. All right, thank you. I love coming off of that, how he talked about as soon as we came off air, he's like, I hope Trout and Pujols don't watch because I just <laughs> talked about how much I enjoyed striking them out. What a great personality from a, a 
honestly a fantastic pitcher but a lot there four different languages yep. who's got that well, it's a good thing he enjoys strikeouts because he he does it enough yes it's familiar <laughs> I mean, yeah as a reliever he he strikes out like 14 guys there it is 13.9 guys per nine innings third highest all time I mean this is one of the elite closers in a major league baseball and again originally signed as a catcher didn't hit enough to stay behind the plate but he sure figured it out 60 feet six inches away. Angel Pagan leads off the third for the Giants as mentioned he has moved from center to left and from lead off to ninth. But he has embraced it Bruce Bochy told us before the game. He's hitting 381 he has scored 13 runs the most in baseball. But I think there is something to be said when there's times when Posey's not in the lineup that Bruce Bochy will go with the pitcher ninth and Pagan is not eighth. He is seventh so he, he is definitely needs to have a hitter behind him. I think there is a mentality that goes with it. And for him he feels like he's a second leadoff. But he's got Denard Span right behind him. Curveball bounce foul. Denard Span the leadoff man is on deck Joe panic behind him as Aaron talked about in the open this is a very good offensive team that the Giants have their third in the National League in runs per game right now five point eight per game. They've hit 19 home runs in the first 12 games of the season although none of the two games here. And they've struck out the fewest number of times of any team in the National League so far. 2 2 swing and a miss big cut by Pagan and he's gone. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear covering the bases with tires for superior performance all season long Goodyear more driven. So now back to the top of the order for span. Former Washington National who signed as a free agent in the offseason. Hit 301 last year but only played in 61 games because of a variety of injuries. But no soft landing places anywhere in this Giants lineup amongst the eight position players and when Bumgarner's pitching and hitting no soft landing places anywhere in the lineup including him. Is he does he have the belt right now as he hands down the best hitting pitcher in baseball. Yeah. You know, especially when you when you've got Clayton Kershaw in the book a couple times. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. and even his his first at bat I think Friday he had a line drive base hit you know to left field and I, I feel like you know he, after he goes yard on him. Before he's one of those guys you watch take BP and it, it's very hitterish. <laughs> he even got the leg hits. kick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he pinch hits sometimes. They yeah. bring him off the bench to Why hit. Not? Boy, right in on the kitchen and Maeda will give way to Turner to make the catch two down. Well, let's show you a Madison Bumgarner home run. This came in San Francisco. It seems like Kershaw and Bumgarner are always matching up against one another. And look at Kershaw. He knew it right away. A no doubter. Down the left field line. The second and two seasons for Bumgarner off Kershaw and his 12th career home run. Nine head to head starts. Amazingly enough, Six of the last seven times that each of these guys has pitched against the other team, it's been against the other guy. Six out of seven. Some of that is the teams often play early in the season, and aces match up a little bit early as they have twice already this year. Obviously, that's going to dissipate over the course of the season. But boy, if you're either one of them and you start counting ahead and looking, and you're saying, "Oh man, not again! I got to match up with that guy again." Of course, we love it though, and, and when you yeah. consider the magnitude of this rivalry, to have those two giants in the sport go at it as much as they have, and to deliver like both of them have, for the most part, they've pitched great against each other. Yep. It's not only is it this team rivalry one of the best in Major League Baseball, Giants and Dodgers, but that individual rivalry oh, yeah. is a fun one too. Maeda is settling in. He's retired six in a row and he's getting the curveball over. Eight very good years in Japan, twice winning the Sawamura Award, which is given to the top pitcher in Japan. Won five gold gloves, or the equivalent of gold gloves over there, too, in his eight years. And he can really move the ball around. 
Now one of the things that happened when the Dodgers signed Maeda when they gave him a physical they discovered what they called some irregularities in his elbow. So the contract is for much less guaranteed money and then a lot more incentive money than was originally intended. You can see outstanding numbers in Japan and so far so good. In the early going here. With the Dodgers. I think if he stays healthy. And that's the big question. Can you keep him healthy if that's the case. I think he's going to be a very good number two pitcher in this league and on this staff for the Dodgers. The question is as a number two how many innings are you realistically going to be able to get out of him? And it's probably in that 170 180. We've seen him pitch great his first two outings six innings. So I don't think you're going to get that horse like stat innings pitched wise. The 2 2 lifted high and deep down the right field line it is gone. Joe Panic with a home run as Maeda surrenders his first run in a Dodger uniform and the Giants take a one to nothing lead. Well this is something he's done very little of and that's make mistakes especially with his secondary pitches out over the plate and I think this is a slider they're trying to backdoor it and look at it. That's just a flat slider. Yasmani Grandal almost knows it before it gets there. It ends up at the belt and it ends up in the heart of the plate. And that's a no doubter for Joe Panic. You see the reaction as he gives up his first major league run, remarkably, in his third start. Second home run of the season for Panic. One to nothing Giants now in the third. 20th home run hit on the season by the Giants. This is their 13th game. The batter is Buster Posey, who grounded out to short his first time up. And might do so again if Seeger can throw him out and he can. Very good arm strength by Seeger deep in the hole. But Panic's home run has broken the ice. The Giants have the lead. Welcome back to Los Angeles the Giants with a one to nothing lead as we move to the bottom of the third as all Dodger fans know this is the last year Vince Scully has announced this is the last year that he will be broadcasting Dodger games and one of the many honors for him they renamed Alicia Park Avenue Vince Scully Avenue just outside the ballpark here and some of the greats from Dodger history were all here on opening day magic going behind the back passing the ball to Vince Scully in his 67th year broadcasting Dodger games you saw among others Sandy Koufax was there Clayton Kershaw was out there Vince Scully began doing Dodger games in Brooklyn as a 22 year old in 1950 he called many years of Jackie Robinson's career in Brooklyn Jack Peterson lifts one into left for out number one so we were having some fun on opening day in San Diego and I just kind of off the cuff said uh, you know I 
him even reading a grocery list would be interesting to me. And lo and behold, somebody heard that and emailed somebody who got it to ESPN. <laughs> and this is a guy who was with the Padres in the 70s and arranged 40 years ago for Vin Scully to read a grocery list. Still had the audio. So we got Vin Scully reading a grocery list. We've got a dozen eggs, a quart of milk, a loaf of bread, a can of frozen orange juice, six small white onions, a green pepper, garlic powder, a package of American cheese, pickles, kosher that is, bananas, cornflakes, maple syrup, toothpaste, paper towels, toilet paper, six bars of soap, hot dogs, quarter pound of chopped meat, steak, lamb chops, package of spaghetti, three apples, bologna, cottage cheese, a pound of butter, two ears of corn, beer, ketchup, peanut butter, soy sauce, and a half a pound of coffee. Worth it, huh? <laughs> I'm hoping we get some of that bologna here. I know. <laughs> Pickles, <laughs> gotta be kosher. Doesn't it make you want to go out and buy some groceries? Oh my God. It's just a, it's a smooth listen. Oh. He makes bologna sound yeah. great. <laughs> Only Vin. There will there will never be another like him. Uh, Vin, if you're watching tonight, it's it's been an honor to get to meet you and get to know you a little bit here at Dodger Stadium. And uh, from all baseball fans to get a chance to listen to you do games for so many years. And this is the 67th and final year that Vin Scully will call Dodger games. 1950 as a 22 year old has called so many no hitters in World Series games. And he's done it all. And he's done it as well as it's ever been done. And there's a nostalgia because of that over the years. So, you know, what, what, regardless of what age you are, I mean, I grew up in the 80s, and I hear his voice now, and it brings back memories. And it's not just baseball memories. He has an ability to storytell and weave that magical way of making you interested in the player, but also the game and what they're doing on the field. Two down in the inning, and back to the top of the order for Chase Utley. I mean, when you think about the fact that he did games in Brooklyn, yeah. and the, the, Dodgers, the Dodgers, yeah. the Dodgers came here after the '57 season, for the '58 season, and to say he's an icon and popular in this city is as big an understatement as you can make. Brooklyn Dodgers winning the World Series in 1955, and then adding a number of championships once they got out to L.A. They have not been to the World Series since 1988. They are the three time defending National League West Division champions three years ago made it to the NLCS each of the last two years were knocked out of the division series. And as always of course. A lot of high hopes for this team they spent more the last few years they've spent more than any team in baseball even more than the Yankees. Both of these teams with some pretty lofty expectations heading into the 2016 season. Just outside. And even though they're facing each other a lot in the beginning of the season, I like the way the schedule matches up because these two teams are usually grinding it out. You kind of expect that with the rivalry, everything they have going on, and they play each other a bunch at the back end of the season. Which I think could make for some fun division division games. And there, strike three called, and Utley knew it. So Samarja looks sharp. One to nothing, Giants at the end of three.
Giants lead the Dodgers one to nothing as we go to the top of the fourth. Moments ago, our Buster Olney visited with Giants manager Bruce Bochy. Bruce, how would you assess the stuff of Jeff Samarja tonight? It looks good. I mean, his uh, velocity's good. He's got a good cutter, uh, you know, slower breaking ball, and he's throwing a split. He's throwing strikes right now. That's a good thing. What are you seeing the approach of your hitters against someone they haven't seen, Maeda, punctuated by panic? You know, I, I like our bats. You know, we only have one hit. Uh, you know, Panic got the big one, but uh, you know, they're long at bats. They're not chasing, uh, so we stretch out these at bats and uh, getting his pitch count up a little bit. That, that's always a good thing too. Bruce, thanks. Bruce Bochy, the architect in so many ways of the success that the Giants have had, along with the, the management team, the consistency the Giants have had over the years winning World Series championships in 2010 12 14 Bochy one of just 10 managers in baseball history to win three or more World Series. Hunter Pence Brandon Belt Matt Duffy do up for the Giants this inning against Kenta Maeda Joe Panic with a home run in the top of the third accounting for the only run of the game thus far. Bouncing ball up the third baseline this is trouble infield hit no throw. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN presented by Taco Bell is brought to you by E-Trade. Don't just see opportunity, seize it. And Ford Service. When your Ford needs service, you need the specialists at Ford. With Aaron Boone, Jessica Mendoza, Buster Olney, I'm Dan Schulman. The leadoff man is aboard for the Giants here in the fourth. And that'll bring up, bring up Brandon Belt, who just last week signed a six-year extension with the Giants and they've now got the entire infield catcher included locked up for years all homegrown all valuable all productive Ooh, broken back ground ball and that's going to get through for a base hit and there's a situation where the shift cost the Dodgers that's a routine double play ball if they're in a normal alignment but in the shift it found a hole. Well, we saw earlier where Grandal was able to kind of beat the shift against Samarja on a hard hit ball. This is a broken bat ball. If they're playing straight up, that's obviously a double double play ball. But watch that bat shatter as it catches off the end of it. And strong enough to just barely scrape it through that infield. And the Giants in business out here to start the fourth. So really a, an, an infield hit a slow roller up the third baseline then what could have been a double play ball a broken a bat bouncer up the middle and instead of two outs nobody on it's two on nobody out for Matt Duffy. Well and they continue to make Maeda work and Bruce Bochy touched on it and what is a hallmark of this lineup there's yeah. no easy outs they're yeah. making him grind they're making him pitch and make pitches and while they've been fortunate this inning. That's what this lineup will do to you and they're not striking out. Yep. And that's to me the biggest difference is you I think especially against a pitcher like Maeda who's tough to square up on you'd rather make contact than than swing and miss because at least you're putting the ball in play you're making something happen and early in this season that's what the Giants have done that's been their M.O. Already 57 pitches thrown by Maeda looking for his first out of the fourth. Live K Zone is brought to you by Han Cook Tire. Well, Duffy didn't pick that one up very well. The count is one and one. Well, typical Maeda fashion when he has fallen behind, he usually goes to some sort of breaking ball. We've seen a lot of curveballs tonight, but there's the slider at the bottom of the zone, and Duffy didn't get a real good look at it, unable to hold up that swing. See how productive Duffy was last year as a rookie in these kinds of situations. Ground ball up the middle. One and two. There's the double play Miami was looking for. We've seen a lot of balls off the hands, off the end of the bat. And a big reason why is Maeda has been pretty unpredictable with his pitches. We talk about his four pitches. You see this at bat to span. He goes fastball up, follows it by a backdoor slider, then goes slider behind a slider to Samarja. Just when you're thinking it might be something different, drops in a curveball. 
and then comes back with a changeup. And you got to remember, his variance in speeds anywhere from 70 miles an hour with his changeup all the way to 92 with his fastball. And right now we see these late kind of awkward swings because he's tough to get the barrel on. And Panic's now, really the only one that's done it. Sorry, just now they're going to intentionally walk Crawford, and here's where having the pitcher hitting eighth kind of changes things. Crawford, the number seven batter, they'll put him on and pitch to Samarja. But I think Maeda showed you his medal right there and just how precise he can be. And that at bat, he gets behind and throws a 1-0 slider at the bottom of the zone to Duffy, plants that in his seed, and then the next pitch follows it up with that tailing fastball in on the hands to really take himself out of trouble now in this inning where two kind of weak hits against him put him in danger. And ball four to Crawford. So Samarja is going to get an opportunity with runners at first and third and two down. He struck out in the second inning. Samarja spent a number of years in the National League with the Cubs, of course, went to Oakland with the White Sox last year. He does have two career home runs and entering tonight a 131 career hitter. The Giants pitching staff might be the best hitting staff in baseball. I mean, Samarja, huge wide receiver with Notre Dame, great athlete. I mean, just his size alone, he gets something. It's going somewhere. Cueto last night watching his at bats. I mean, he had a nice swing. I mean, he was even his misses. We've already talked about Madison Bumgarner going yard twice off of Kershaw. Cueto did a great job on the mound last night as well. Retired the first 13 batters he faced. And wound up going seven and a third, giving up just one run. Cueto's three and zero oh on the season with a 3.38 ERA. If Samarja pitches as well as he's capable of pitching, and Cueto is healthy and doing what he's doing, Bumgarner's Bumgarner. That's a pretty good one, two, three, or three, two, one. The way I said them, but then you got Kane and Peavy. The Giants very encouraged by the way that Matt Kane is throwing the ball, though the the results haven't been there so far. You know what looks good on Kane is, and talking to Bruce Bochy about him before the game as we look at Jake Peavy over there on the benches. For the first time in a couple of years in talking to Boch, you could tell he lights up a little bit about how the ball is coming out of the hand of Matt Kane, how, what his look is like now all of a sudden. Swing and a miss. A couple of men left on. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth, one to nothing Giants. We'll hear from Dodger manager Dave Roberts when we come back.
It's going bottom four, one to nothing. The Giants lead the Dodgers here at Dodger Stadium on Sunday Night Baseball. Between innings, our buster only with Dodger manager Dave Roberts. Dave, how would you compare what you've seen Maeda tonight to his first two starts? Yeah, you know, I, I thought, uh, you know, I thought he's good tonight early on, just really not getting a feel for the breaking ball, which, uh, and the couple starts prior, he had a better feel and left the backdoor cutter up to panic for a homer. But outside of that, now he's got a feel for the change, so he'll be fine. You're the Dodgers' first African American manager, you know, on Friday, Major League Baseball celebrated Jackie Robinson Day. What does the legacy of Jackie Robinson mean to you? Yeah, you know, that, that's a long, that's a, that's, I hope you have time. Uh, you know what, we, what Jackie did for Civil Rights Movement for myself and other minorities playing, not even minority players, but all baseball players. Um, you know, on the other day, having Sharon Robinson, Rachel Robinson, and spending time with them, uh, Frank Robinson flew in for the day, and it was a special uh, night to remember. Dave, thanks. All right, Buster, thank you. Great stuff from Dave Roberts. Jackie Robinson Day on the 15th. That was Friday night. All players wearing number 42. The only night that anybody can wear 42, which is retired throughout baseball. Here's Corey Seager to lead off the fourth for the Dodgers. Grounded out his first time up. And Dave Roberts, born to an African American father and a Japanese mother, born in Okinawa, Japan. But uh, from the perspective of an African American, obviously. Uh, great love for Jackie Robinson also played for the Dodgers not his whole career but played for the Dodgers and also uh, went to UCLA yeah. as Jackie Robinson did so Dave Roberts played has a Jackie Robinson Stadium that's right yeah. so he's got it coming and going on all sides with Jackie Robinson one of the game's great great figures and players not even just for baseball I mean I think just for everything about our country Seeger bounces one into center field a base hit. Well, one of the quotes from Jackie Robinson a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives by that measure Jackie Robinson's life was incredibly important. And I believe that quote is on his tombstone. Yes. Rookie of the year in his first year in 1947 MVP in 1949 won one World Series championship in 55 in Brooklyn and a Hall of Fame inductee in 1962 Justin Turner the batter. I feel like sometimes what gets lost is how great a player Jackie was. I agree. Um, you know obviously the impact he had and the man he was but for his time in the big leagues shorter than some obviously Hall of Fame careers because he wasn't allowed to be on the field right away. He was a great great player. I think he was 28 when he mm -hmm. played for the first time in the majors played 10 years in the majors. Justin Turner with a fly ball to right field his first time up as Samarja misses way outside Turner since coming to the Dodgers in 2014 has hit 311. You know, for all the money they spend and all the big names they have, this guy's their number three hitter. All the time. Yep. And he'll get the occasional day off, but all these good players they have, Justin Turner finds himself in that three hole because he can rake, and that's all he's done since he's come to Los Angeles. And consistently. Yes. There's a lot of guys that can rake, but they <laughs> cannot do it 162 games. But Dave Roberts does want to get him some days off, not just him. He's talked about a lot of guys, about Puig. Uh, some of the other players want Utley obviously wanting to get them out of the lineup from time to time and he's going to stick to his guns he's going to stick to his plan about resting guys so Turner might kind of be three four days on one off throughout the season and that's where a guy not only the versatility of Kendrick as we've seen but a guy like Kike Hernandez yes. who is not on the starting lineup tonight plays all the time against lefties sometimes against righties but he is raking right now. Yeah I was going to say how about your bench guy comes yeah. off and hits two bombs off of Madison Bumgarner yeah. oh yeah I mean that. Uh, that allows you to, you know, talking to Dave Roberts, I'm, I'm sure every manager in baseball would love to sit here and say, I'd like to give these six guys rest consistently, but do you have the guys on the bench that can back it? This team does. Kike playing six different positions, you have the ability to move them around. And that's with Andre Ethier, Carl Crawford, Scott Van Slyke all on the L right now, but they still have some depth. Trace Thompson. Yep. Brother, brother of, of Clay. Who's busy these days? 
You guys, Dave Roberts has the challenge of trying to explain to a lot of veteran players on a given day why they're not in the lineup, but I've heard from Dodger players. He's done a great job this year. He's very positive. He's a strong relationship building with the guys in his clubhouse. That's the bet the Dodgers have made. Andrew Friedman and his staff, they've bet on depth, and they've accumulated a ton of depth that's helped them so far with the injury issues, obviously. Close, but, but no. That is a great take by Justin Turner. Reason is, this is where Samarja has been living all game long. It's a way pitch to righties, and look at how it just misses. You see him want to chase that pitch, but see that his front foot, Justin Turner, if you watch, his body is pulling. He's sitting on something more inner half, and he does a good job of holding off and not chasing what Samarja, Samarja wants. doesn't think it's a good take, <laughs> and that ball lit up the K. That means it caught the co corner with that run back to the outside corner. Runner goes, throw down on a bounce, and the tag applied by Crawford to get Seeger. What a great play by the gold glover, Brandon Crawford. Posey does a real nice job of getting rid of this ball quickly. It's a cut fastball off the plate. You see him just not even really step, but look how he's able to keep the glove down. Usually that's a ball, a tough in-between hop like that. Your, your glove's going to tend to drift and take you up. Not only does Brandon Crawford have soft hands, but strong hands to keep it there and hold that tag down. Great play by a great player. Well, we got one of the best rivalries in baseball here. We got another one coming your way tomorrow night on Monday Night Baseball as the Cubs and Cardinals start a three game series at Bush Stadium. 8 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. The Cubs lost today 2 to nothing to Colorado. St. Louis getting some big hits in the early going from Jeremy Hazelbaker, an outfielder who looked like he might have a chance to stick out of spring. Not only has he stuck, he has played and he has hit well when he's been in the lineup. A lot of teams have been Hazelbakered so yep. far this start <laughs> the season. I think it, I think it's a verb now. Cardinals beating Cincinnati four to three today. Move St. Louis to seven and five on the season. Ground ball to second. One and back to first in time to double up Adrian Gonzalez and end the inning. So good defense by the Giants on the infield this inning. One nothing at the end of four.
You're watching Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, presented by Taco Bell. Dave Schulman, Aaron Boone, Jessica Mendoza, Buster Olney, glad you're with us here at Dodger Stadium. The Giants and the Dodgers, a Joe Panic home run, the only run of the game thus far. Rubber match of this three game series. Both of these teams off to a seven and five start, tied with Colorado. Three way tie atop the National League West right now. It'll be Angel Pagan, Denard Span, and then Panic. Here in the fifth against Kenta Maeda, who has given up his first run of the major leagues tonight on that panic home run, is now still though only given up the one run in 16 innings of work. And he's gotten a feel for that breaking ball that we saw him struggle with at the two walks in the first inning. He thought this was going to be a long game, not characteristic of Maeda for, through those first two starts. And since then, besides the mistake to panic, he's really settled in, got a feel for a pitch he lacked. Big swing and a miss of the curveball. And that was one of them. This curveball, you mentioned it early, Dan. He wasn't having a hard time. That's a pitch usually drops in, flips it in for a strike, and exactly like he does to Pecan right there. The way it moves away from the bat. He was having a hard time getting it near the strike zone in that first inning. Bouncer foul, one and two. Well, they definitely made him work in the first, although he was his own worst men, enemy in the first with a lack of command. A couple of walks and a 3 0 count on another hitter. Six innings in each of his first two starts. One against the Padres, one against the Diamondbacks. One thing that and we've alluded to it not only does he throw a lot of different pitches, but he can vary the velocity on each pitch. He can throw the slider. Anywhere from high 70s to mid 80s, the curveball high 60s to mid 70s, and so on. So he can make four pitches look like more than four pitches. And now, after getting ahead of Pagan, back to back fastballs. He chased him in on the 1 2 pitch off the plate, another fastball away. Now, on the 3 2, if you're Pagan, you know he can flip anything in there for a strike, so you've got to respect. All his pitches at this point. I think he goes off speed. Got him. He did go off speed. Looked like a slider up above the zone, and he strikes out Pagan for the second time. Yeah, I don't think he made the pitch he wanted to. I think he probably wanted the back door of this slider. Kind of drifts over the heart of the plate, but up and out of the zone, and Pagan just can't quite get to it. A big first out for Maeda as Pagan helps him a little bit, probably leaving the zone up. See that super slow mo and his bat under that ball. So now Denard Span, who has struck out and popped up. Maeda's got five strikeouts tonight. Span with a fly ball to center field. Peterson there, two down. Well, here's the difference in the game. We talked about Maeda struggling a little bit with his command, but for the most part, he doesn't make mistakes in the heart of the plate. And Yasmani Grandal, you see the reaction right away. He wanted that slider backdoored. It drifted right over the heart of the plate. Actually, a little similar to the pitch Pagan just swung through, but Panic able to catch it. He hit it a long way back into the Giants' bullpen. The one thing you hear about Maeda is. He makes good misses. Even when he misses a spot, he usually does it in an area where he's not going to get hurt. He didn't do it on that pitch, and he paid the price. It's the only run of the game so far. Curveball, and he got a call there, and it's one and one. But I think this shows how good a pitcher Maeda is. It doesn't feel to me like he's pitching his best tonight. He's kind of had to kind of work through some command issues early, and he's sitting here with two outs in the fifth, having given up only one run and two hits. And a ground ball to short. Seeger on to first, and it's a quick three up, three down inning for Kenta Maeda. Yasiel Puig will lead it off for the Dodgers when we come back.
Talented and one of the more unique players in Major League Baseball. Every week, Jessica Mendoza goes behind the scenes, tells you some things you might not know. And this week, it's Hunter Pence. Mendoza! Hunter Pence has the nickname the Reverend. Back in 2012, he came out, talked to the team, game three of the NLDS, part of a huge comeback against the Reds. Since then, it's been a huge attribute that he said the books and the knowledge that he fills his brain with. We're talking all over the map, the psychology, philosophy, spirituality, anything from a martial arts swordsman in 1645 to the Bible to Gandhi. And what he says this does is allows him to understand the teammates around him, how to motivate them, how to get the most out of them, and to be able to really garner everything about baseball, but also how to get the most out of his teammates. They love him. Bruce Bochy loves him. There's Yasiel Puig leading off the fifth. The highlight of my day literally is that I've read one of those books. Which one? Wow. Honestly, the four agreements. I've read one of those books. It was given to me. I did not seek it out. It was given to me, but I've read one of those books. We can talk about I, it with Hunter next time. We'll, well, we're going to have a little book conference. You are very mature. <laughs> Booney, any It's all books? relative there. You, you flipping back? Gandhi lately? <laughs> what was the last book you read? <sighs> I was I was in the word today. <laughs> no, I actually appreciate because I, I I spoke to him in spring training. He gave me two books to read, and I read halfway through one of them. I finished reading uh, the first one. He told me, and they're all over the map from business. Had a 20-minute conversation with him on Friday. I felt like he was trying to help me. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of guy he is. You know, it's interesting, guys. He didn't have that reputation before he joined the Giants. Bobby Evans, our general manager, thinks that because he got a lot of quiet guys in that clubhouse, he stepped up. Swing and a miss to get Puig. Scott's MLB pitch hit and run is the official youth skills competition of Major League Baseball. It's free for boys and girls ages 7 to 14. Play your way to the national finals and have the chance to compete during All-Star Week in San Diego. Find a local competition in your area at pitchhitrun.com. Third strikeout of the night for Samarja. And that'll bring up Yasmani Grandal. A big crowd here at Dodger Stadium tonight. So Marge has now thrown a first pitch strike to 13 of the 15 hitters he has faced. One of the guys he did was Grandal's first at bat, which ended up being a base hit. Well, he works better, so much better when he gets ahead because he has better movement on the pitches that he throws on the edges. He gets really flat when he tries to come over the middle of the plate. And that's one of his strengths. When he gets early, gets ahead early, he's going to be able to finish hitters. But when he gets behind, that's when you see the hits get given up. Samarja in a deep freeze there, hoping <laughs> to get the call that wasn't coming his way. Remember last inning, he didn't get that call against Justin Turner on a pitch that did catch the corner. This ball definitely just drifted off the plate away. It was close, and he wanted it, but good call. Sets up this one when he tries to come back inside. As you saw, he wanted to try to do with his cutter. It's all about the setup for both these pitchers tonight. Up and in, ball four. Let's take a look now at Play More Fantasy Baseball stats of the day brought to you by the all new LG G5. Some of the players, if you've got them on your fantasy team, you're pretty happy. If you got Bryce Harper, you're pretty happy. He homered again today, fourth straight game, although the Nationals lost to the Phillies. Matt Moore had a good day for the Rays. We talked about the Altuve home run a little bit later, uh, a little bit earlier. Nolan Arenado just putting up numbers year after year. And the Diamondbacks get a win as Yasmani Tomas hits a couple of home runs for Arizona. Tomas is a bat they need. A.G. Pollock going down. So much talk about the offense. These Diamondbacks, especially getting Granky, Shelby Miller, and they need to put up those numbers. And Tomas is a big question mark if he could be consistent. See the ball Bryce Harper hit today? I didn't see it. You, you were telling me oh about my. it. Oh, my. 
gave him a lead in the tenth, and they lost oh. it in the but in the bottom of the ten. A long way to right. A fairly long way to right here off the bat of Kendrick. But Pence is there to make the catch two down. Some of the other things going on around Major League Baseball. How about Jake Arrieta? He's got a scoreless streak, obviously going well back into last season. 48 two thirds at Wrigley Field. We mentioned a Bryce Harper, four games in a row with a homer, now six on the season. Remember when the Braves and Twins were winless at 0 and 9? They both swept weekend series. Atlanta. Sweeping Miami and Minnesota sweeping the Angels. Runner at first is Grandal, two down, and here's Jock Peterson. The last time we were here for Sunday night, the Dodgers Stadium was when Jake Arrieta threw his no hitter. It was your first game? That was my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like, you show up, the <laughs> no hitter happens. This is how we do it here. This is, yeah. this is how it, it happens. <laughs> but there was a lot of question if Arrieta could. Continue through because he threw a lot of innings deep. He got a tired late, but to come out strong early in the season, just making a statement, what a kind of shape he's in. Aaron, what do you see from Jock Peterson? What does he need to do to get back what he had the first half of last year? I think it's just look, it's pitch recognition. He's got a lot of moving parts, and he's gone through a lot of different adjustments, you know, with his stance, with his swing. And I think in the second half of this last season where they really started to make adjustments, he was unable to adjust back. And I think as a young player, as a rookie player, you know, he's hitting in the leadoff spot, playing every day. I think he's set up more for success this year with the emergence of Trace Thompson, who's going to play a lot against left-handed pitching. He's hitting down in the order, perhaps less pressure, where the great power and the talent can just take over a little bit. But it's... If he keeps the ball in the hitting zone, he can be deadly because of the great bat speed and power. I watch him hit, and he's raking. It's all about his posture. He does a so explosive, such a great job with his lower half. But when he loses those legs, when he gets that head out front onto that front leg, he loses everything his body in a way that most hitters could only dream of being able to do. He loses it by just one movement of getting that weight too far out in front. Popped up but back out of play. And on this one he actually just stays back. And you watch where his head goes. See that posture. That's the big thing for him is how that weight transfers forward. And you look at that back leg and as he gets his front foot down watch with his back leg it just starts to kind of collapse he kind of leans back you see that lean you see this angle right here that's where he loses all that power that he's able to just crank when he's on time and looking good two and two the count with the Dodgers down one to nothing in the bottom of the fifth This one is hit high in the air, deep right field. He cranked it, and this game is tied. A two-run homer, excuse me, for Peterson, and the Dodgers take a two-to-one lead as Grandal scores in front of him. Second on the season for Jock Peterson. Watch Jock Peterson. Watch him be able to get that back leg exactly where he needs it to go. He doesn't push his weight forward. He gets it to stay back. Watch what his front foot comes down. That back leg just drives. And look at that posture. Look at where his head's over that back leg. He's not leaning back like we saw with the foul ball. And he's not leaning foul forward. Look at that lower half. And very little doubt about it from the moment it left the bat. Two to one Dodgers bottom of the fifth inning. And look at Samarja's reaction here. And this is what plagued him a season ago. When he had runners on base. Teams hit 304 against him during the year. And it was because of pitches like that where he's rolling along and he's got all the stuff. But he makes a mistake in the heart of the plate. 
and he makes a mistake to a guy with a ton of power and gives the Dodgers a lead. Maeda grounds one and hits the foot of Samarja, bounces to Duffy, and they'll get Maeda by a step to end the inning. But Jock Peterson goes deep for the second time this season. A rocket to right. Samarja still frustrated. At the end of five, the Dodgers now have the lead. Provided by Goodyear, covering the bases with tires for superior performance all season long. Goodyear, more driven. Beautiful night here in Los Angeles and a good game. The Dodgers with a two to one lead going to the top of the sixth inning. Jock Peterson with a two run shot off Jeff Samarja in the bottom of the fifth. And Samarja is still steamed. He's hoping his teammates can get it back here as we go to the sixth inning. Three, four, five. Posey, Pence, and Belt. Posey lifts one in the air. We there, one down. Time now to take a look at our value player brought to you by True Value. And we gave you some of the accomplishments that Buster Posey has got beside his name already. Really impressive stuff for a guy who you know, may only be halfway through his career. 29 years of age. Bet you that last one's the one he's happiest about. Larry. Larry. And all after that devastating leg injury a few years back. Well, there's so much credit given to the entirety of this lineup and the depth that's behind it and how similar these hitters are even though their styles might be different but the fact they are patient they're aggressive when they need to be they're not afraid to take a walk they don't strike out a lot and Buster Posey's at the top as far as him epitomizing how these hitters try to be they want to emulate and be like Buster Posey and the way he carries himself and the way he handles himself in that batter's box. One and one the count on Hunter Pence who has walked and reached on an infield hit. There's a good look at that slider from Maeda that he's gotten a feel for just breaks off the plate and that Hunter Pence. 
Just a little out front and can't quite cover as it's off the plate. One two and he got him again same pitch. Six strikeouts. Well with Pence with you just getting a good look at Hunter Pence right now a good time for us to go to the boondoggle as Aaron imitates based on the voting of you the fans online. So this is Aaron doing Hunter Pence before the game. I wanted him to roll up his jeans. That's my favorite part. <laughs> that, that's that's the best part. <laughs> Not bad, Aaron. Not my best. That's first time that's, you've done it, though. That's right? the first, first time, time I've done, done Hunter Pence. Yeah. So call that one a work in progress. The weather cost us a chance to have you do a rod last week. Yeah. That's one of your best. That, that's going to circle back. We'll, we'll have that at some point this year. Yeah. Next week, it'll be Boston and Houston. So Aaron has chosen a Red Sox player, past or present, and an Astros player, past or present. And you vote between Fred Lynn and Evan Gaddis. Why'd you pick Fred Lynn, or do you not want to give any secrets away? I think I can do him. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what it's it comes all, down to. Yeah. Right. You must have a feel. I would think it would be a nice service for you to your fans to work on Big Poppy before the end of the season. Oh. You got to do Big Poppy at some point. You're right. So. You're right. I've never really done him. Usually I look at someone and I feel like, okay, I could do that right away or I can't. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going to work on Big Poppy. 1 2 to Brandon Bell. Guys, I want to slip this in there. There was a reviewer who was watching Aaron Boone's Hunter Pence. His last name was Bumgarner. He gave you about four and a half stars. <laughs> Tough audience, bats and Bumgarner too. You could do Bumgarner. Well, I told him if I could do him, I'd I'd still be playing. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the one-two. Line down to first to end the inning. Seven in a row set down by Maeda. He and the Dodgers have the lead going bottom six. Bottom six, the Dodgers lead the Giants two to one here on Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Taco Bell. We're live at Dodger Stadium. Chase Utley leads it off against Jeff Samarja. 
Utley has popped up in foul territory and been called out on strikes. He'll be followed by Corey Seager and then Justin Turner. All the offense in this game coming on home runs. A solo shot by Joe Panic for the Giants, top of the third, a two run home run for Jock Peterson for the Dodgers in the bottom of the fifth. Good pitcher's duel between Samarja and Maeda. One one is in the dirt ball two. Samarja pretty efficient so far. Went eight innings his last time out at Colorado. Going to win on Tuesday. Utley slams one into right field, a base hit. And that'll bring up Corey Seager, 10 days shy of his 22nd birthday, one of the top young players in all of baseball, regarded as one of the top prospects in the game. They love his bat, they love his poise, they love the clock in his head as he plays the field. They love the way he's just kind of blended in with older players. They love everything about this guy. Had a home run last night off Javier Lopez. Had a base hit his last time up and was thrown out trying to steal. And I've had his home run against Javi Lopez late in that Giants game that will Giants win. It was probably one of the more impressive at bats that I've seen from him. Because he had a battle, he 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 literally wasted some great Javi Lopez pitches, and you got to understand that's a lefty lefty specialist situation. Until he got something that he could hit out of the park, and that's a maturity that you don't normally see from a player this young. Could be two into the shift, and they'll only get one. And this is one of those situations where Crawford's coming at the bag from an unusual angle, and they just couldn't turn it. And again, these middle infielders, especially the really good middle infielders that are used to just kind of playing and just doing things a certain way, but he knows he's got to make sure he holds that bag and that feed from panic. Normally, in the past, Crawford would probably just move through that ball, but he knows that'll take him off the bag and the neighborhood would then be in effect and he'd ultimately be safe. He's got to hold that bag and because it twists him around, he can't get enough momentum to get back and get that throw off to first base. Well, the ugly rule, right? Yeah. <laughs> started with that, not started, but that kind of sped up the process. There were already some people talking about maybe making changes out at second base, but there's absolutely no question that the Utley slide, if you want to call it a slide, into uh, Ruben Tejada last year sped up the situation. Fractured his leg. Yeah. It's all quieted down. Haven't had as much going on in week two as there was in week one around second base. You haven't heard as much of an outcry against the new rule. Justin Turner lifts a pop up back into shallow center. And Crawford back pedals to make the play two down. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN presented by Taco Bell is brought to you by Residence Inn. It's not a room, it's a residence. And Edward Jones, where attention and sound advice is a big deal. Guys, I guarantee you, had that same play developed a year ago, it would have been a double play. Because there's no doubt in my mind that Crawford would have just came off the bag and went and reached right. that throw. But just the fear of maybe leaving a little bit early, he knows he can't roll the dice. He's got to hang out there and just could not get enough momentum back around to get a throw off. And 90% of the conversation has been about the slide. But without the new slide rule, they wouldn't have changed the neighborhood play because they feel now the middle infielder needs to stay on the bag because he's being offered adequate protection because of the slide rule. They, they, they come together, right? Well, now, though, you, especially the good middle, normally last year he goes and gets that and he yeah. probably comes off the bag, yeah. but he knows he's got to hold it now. But I think the middle infielders now that are really good around the bag feel a little bit more in danger now because they've got to hold it a certain way. The really good ones know how to protect themselves and handle any kind of traffic out there. 
Crawford will have to unleash a long throw and it's right on the money to get Gonzalez and in the inning. No runs a base hit and a man left won the gold glove last year showing you some of his skills. End of six two one Dodgers. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN presented by Taco Bell. The best seats at every ballpark for every game. Visit MLB.com slash tickets today. Along with Jessica Mendoza, Aaron Boone, Buster Olney, and our ESPN crew, I'm Dan Schulman. This is Sunday Night Baseball live from Dodger Stadium. Rubber match of a three-game series. The Dodgers lead two to one going to the seventh, and Bruce Bochy is out on the field right now with home plate umpire Alfonso Marquez. Matt Duffy's waiting to hit but everybody's looking over to the first base side of the field in the general direction of the Giants dugout. Not sure exactly what's going on down there but Bochi had some concerns and now Alfonso Marquez is going to go over and share whatever it is with Dave Roberts. And we have a new third base coach that's Steve Decker who is taking over for Roberto Kelly. I'm trying to get more details for you. So my head of being given a chance to throw a couple of warm up pitches. Steve Decker, normally their assistant hitting coach. And that's not an easy role to just jump into. Maeda working into the seventh inning for the first time in three big league starts. At 87 pitches right now, number 88 is a good curveball for a strike. Maeda threw 84 and 95 pitches in his first two outings. There is activity behind him in the Dodger pen. I just saw Roberto Kelly walking with trainers in the dugout and looked like they were taking him back up into the hotel or up into the, the clubhouse. So hopefully it's nothing too serious and we'll get some word on it.
One and two on Matt Duffy, who's flied out, and grounded into a double play. Duffy, I don't think gets a lot of the credit he deserves coming in last year and second rookie of the year voting. The way he's handled himself, himself at third base, but even just getting into the, the batter's box and the way he, his stance, his approach, he's very simple. Especially for young hitters, a lot of the day and age where we see leg kicks, we see movement, we see so many things going on with the body. Matt Duffy has got almost that old school just standing there. When I talked to him about it, he said, I focus on one thing, and that's the ball. So many guys talk about their mechanics and the things they're thinking about. If you're thinking about all that, how can you hit? Two balls, two strikes the count as he leads off the seventh. And it's strike three call number seven on the night for Maeda. Well, he's really pitched Duffy tough tonight. He's thrown fastballs in. He's worked both sides of the plate with that fastball. He's thrown a lot of sliders. And here, Duffy's kind of battling him tough. And a pitch maybe just a skosh off the plate on the outside, but a great pitch nonetheless. And a good job by Grandal of going out and catching that before it breaks too far off the plate and giving a good look for Alfonso Marquez. But Maeda, after struggling again with that command early, has really settled in and looked like the polished pitcher he's shown to be early in the season. Brandon Crawford, the batter. Live K-Zone is brought to you by Han Cook Tire. Crawford has flied out and been intentionally walked. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Dodgers. One run, three hits, no errors for the Giants. Maeda and Samarja have both been good, very good. Down and away. This is kind of what you expected Friday night when you had Clayton Kershaw and Madison Bumgarner going head to head. You thought, okay, two to one ball game. That was. I think finished up seven to seven to three, seven to four. And this one, I mean, both pitchers. I mean, we've seen the long ball a couple mistakes, but for the, the most part, they've just missed bats and missed the barrel of the bat. Locating Maeda, you mentioned a booty, both sides of the plate, but also his velocity difference. And a base hit to left field. A one out single for Crawford. And Samarja is coming to the plate right now. You got to give some credit to the Giants hitters. What they've been able to do is just kind of battle with Maeda. They're not trying to crank the ball out. They're not trying to go for it. Just putting the ball in play, and that's what you saw with Crawford. Booney, you surprised Samarja's hitting? I am. You know, uh, he's given them six strong innings. But. Actually, no, I'm not. Now that it's an out because you're in a bunting situation. So I think they definitely want to at least get one more. His, his pitch count's okay, and I think they're just going to try and bunt and move him along and give Pagan a chance to tie this game up. It drops. There's the lead runner and the double play. So it does not work out for the Giants as Samarja bunts into the double play. Good play by Maeda. And the inning is over.
Well, we talked about Kenta Maeda being a gold glove pitcher over in Japan and a great play to finish off this inning. The worst thing you can do in a sacrifice situation is pop the ball up, but Maeda's good instincts and good fielding kind of pulls up on this, makes sure he handles that hop, and he knows because it's popped up that Crawford's probably got a hold for a second, so he's going to have a chance to turn that double play, and the Dodgers turn it flawlessly and get a huge double play to end the seventh inning and preserve the lead. We go to the bottom of the seventh. A two to one lead for the Dodgers over the Giants. Yasiel Puig, Yasmani Grandal, and Howie Kendrick. Puig has struck out a couple of times. And he takes a strike over the outside edge 0 and 1. Let's go down to Buster who's got an update on Roberto Kelly. Buster. Yeah guys I checked with the Giants dugout and they said Roberto Kelly was hit in the head by an errant throw uh, when the infield was throwing the ball around the infield before that inning. All right Buster thank you so he is not in the game anymore. Steve Decker the assistant hitting coach is now working at third base for the Giants. We did go around says Chris Guccione the first base up and it's 0 and 2. Well, let's take a look. The first pitch was off the plate away, and the Giants got the call. Puig was a little frustrated. Did he go around? Man, that's awfully close right there. But liner into center. It's a base hit. Ooh, he's busting it around first, putting some pressure on the outfielder span, holds him to a single. Puig does a nice adjustment with this base hit. You see where Posey wants the ball, but he sees it up in the zone. He's had two strikeouts tonight, but he stays simple with this swing. Watch him run, hold up. Thinking about going too, but look at the way he lets this ball get deep. He's able to. How still his head this. is. I mean, it's a picture perfect where his head and eyes are over the belly button, over the legs, and, and just how smooth. Puig is and that's after two strikeouts earlier this game and, and and the maturity of Puig there you mentioned two strikeouts earlier and two questionable calls to put him in O2 hole he calls timeout and kind of gathers himself and then puts a really good swing on a cut fastball away to start off this inning. He's still young yeah he he's had a rough couple of years with some maturity questions, some injuries, and so forth. But Aaron, do you still think that Week has star potential? Absolutely. I mean, the, the talent's undeniable, and, and I think him coming in in outstanding shape this year. There's no question. It's not just lip service. What they're talking about about his approach and his attitude this year. There he goes, and he steals second. And it's the way he plays the game. I mean, you saw him turn around first after that hit, having to hold him up. He immediately wants to take second with this steal. He goes in hard. Watch the jump that he gets and how explosive he is in those first few steps. He goes in head first right into Crawford. And he was a little hesitant as he came up. Because this doesn't feel, feel good as he slides right into the ball and gets a little bit of the cleat to Crawford. But that's how he plays. He plays hard. Posey went with that one step quick throw as we saw earlier but as a result there was a lot of tail on that throw maybe a play Crawford could have handled and if he does catch it he's out so a tough chance out there at second The throw gets away from Posey. Grandal takes second, and the Dodgers have added to their lead. Well, Puig perhaps gets away with a bit of a mistake here with no outs. This is a roll of the dice to go home. Crawford shows nice range, but as soon as it kicks off, he decides to go. And I think if Posey hangs on to this ball, 
Puig may be out at the plate for the first out of the inning. As it is, it turns into a rear, very aggressive play that pads the lead of the Dodgers. And Grandal on the throw is able to get down to second base. But you see Puig doesn't really hesitate, but he's out if Posey handles that throw. It's a good throw from Brandon Crawford. Just kicks off and a big insurance run here for the Dodgers. It's a perfect example of what Yasiel Puig is. I mean, he just rides that line of making the play that could cost you the game or making the play that could honestly get your team rallying to win the game. Base hit, RBI, second on the throw. 3-1 Dodgers. The batter was Howie Kendrick. You saw left-hander Josh Osich up in the pen now for the Giants. Jock Peterson, who homered in his last two bat off Samarjas in the on-deck circle. The batter was Howie Kendrick, 0 for 2. Just pitched very well tonight, but gave up the home run to Peterson with a man aboard in the fifth and has been touched up for another run here in the seventh. And as well as he's pitched, Maeda, who was a little rocky early, has pitched even a little bit better for the Dodgers. Two balls and a strike on Howie Kendrick. It's probably a situation in a 3 1 lead where Howie Kendrick is looking to hit the ball the other way. This is one of those times where if you hit the ball the other way and even if you make an out, you have a chance to advance that runner to third, an important insurance run potentially to get him to third with less than two outs. Pitch to hit, but he fouled it off. Full count. Yeah, 3 1 there. You know, he was probably being a little more greedy there in the 3 1 count and got a kind of a flat fastball out over the plate that ran back to the heart of the plate, just a little bit under that pitch. Runner at second, nobody out to run in this inning for the Dodgers to lead 3 to 1. A look back by Samarja and the 3 2 on the way, and it's down and away, ball four. Well, Samarja, and that might be his last pitch of the night, but it's been effective all night. The mistakes he has been making are against lefties. All these pitches, Buster Posey is set up away, and the ball just kind of flattens out over the heart of the plate. There, the home run to Jock Peterson. But all those pitches are designed to be tailing fastballs down and away. They all leak to the heart of the plate, and it's really been the lefties that have hurt Samarja just a little bit, but enough to give the Dodgers the lead. Bochy takes the ball from Samarja. The left-hander Josh Osich on his way into the game for the Giants.
Tomorrow night on Monday Night Baseball, it'll be the Cubs and the Cardinals. John Lackey and Mike Leak of the Mound. That game comes your way at 8 o'clock Eastern Time here on ESPN. Wednesday night, the Tigers and the Royals. And a week from tonight, we'll see the Red Sox and the Houston Astros. Meanwhile, back here in Los Angeles with the Dodgers leading 3 to 1. Jeff Samarge is out of the game. Left hander Josh Osich comes in to make his eighth appearance already this season. And Dave Roberts will counter with a pinch hitter. Jock Peterson has been called back. And Kike Hernandez is going to bat. He is a weapon against left handed pitching. Remember, he's the guy who hit two home runs last week off Madison Bumgarner. Very versatile guy, can play about five different spots. First and second, nobody out. And he bounces it foul. Let's go back just over a week ago in San Francisco. First inning. Or, excuse me, Friday night here. First inning, a drive to deep left center field. And then in the third inning, he hits his second home run of the night deep into the bleachers and left. Hernandez, this is incredible. Hernandez now in his career against Baumgartner is 10 for 16 with three home runs and four doubles against one of the very best pitchers in the game. Diving stop Crawford. They'll get an out at second on a great play by Crawford, but that's it. Well, another hard hit ball off a left hander as Crawford shows that range. Perhaps that little juggle, though, maybe they wouldn't have been able to turn the double play anyway, but that certainly eliminated a good play nonetheless. But a runner moves now to third base for the Dodgers with less than two outs. And another pinch hitter coming up now for the Dodgers. Trace Thompson will bat for the pitcher, Kenta Maeda. Thompson, a 25-year-old outfielder, required in the offseason in a three-way deal. He was with the White Sox last year. He is the younger brother of Golden State Warrior guard Clay Thompson. And Thompson figuring to get a chance to play against lefties. Can play all three outfield spots. Osage, you see there, 97 miles an hour. He really emerged last year. And the Giants are can, are hoping he can make take another step and really become a valuable piece of that back end mix. That fastball mid upper 90s cut fastball. Got a change up to go along with it. Ground ball to second. And the double play will end the inning. So Osich gets some grounders and gets out of it. My eight is done for the night. 3-1 Dodgers at the end of seven.
tonight. We saw Kenta Maeda through the seven innings really work outside of the zone. You see the slide ball, then the slider, the curveball, then the two seamer, the different velocities back to the slider, up in the zone, then another two seamer off the plate. Then he rocks the change up. You see the not just the different velocities, the way he's able to utilize his pitches outside of the strike zone. That's why he only gave up the four hits. He had the seven Ks, a strong outing again for Kenta Maeda. Some changes for the Dodgers, including a new pitcher, Chris Hatcher, comes out of the bullpen for Los Angeles. A year ago, Hatcher went three and five with a 369 ERA in 49 appearances. You can see his numbers so far this year. A couple of changes in the outfield as well. Kike Hernandez stays in the game in left field, so Howie Kendrick is out. And Trace Thompson stays in the game in center field. So you've got Hernandez, Thompson, Puig left to right. The Dodgers have depth and have versatility. Even with three outfielders on the disabled list, Dave Roberts can still make some moves. As Angel Pagan opens up the eighth inning by taking a strike. A little up and in a ball and a strike on Pagan who was struck out twice. Live K zone is brought to you by Han Cook Tire. There's a swing and a miss one and two. The Hatcher who they hope. Continues to develop and emerge as a real good back end bridge to their great closer Kenley Jansen it's been an issue for the Dodgers in the last few years especially when they've gotten to the postseason just having that bridge to Jansen they're hoping Hatcher and Baez Jimmy Garcia foul tip held one down Sunday night baseball on ESPN is presented by Taco Bell's new queso lupa it has everyone talking what are you waiting for and in part by Acura, precision crafted performance. And Norwegian Cruise Line, feel free. Kenley Jansen up in the pen. He's already been used once this year for a five out save. So Dave Roberts obviously, if need be this inning, you would bring him in for more than three outs here tonight. And him coming in in the eighth inning against the D-backs on Wednesday, I feel like was a huge turnaround for this bullpen, which looked pretty ugly through the first eight games. And it's since been pretty dynamic the last four games. And Dave Roberts gave a huge credit to Kenley being able to take that and say, hey, you know what, well, however I can help this team. See the ERA, huge difference. First eight games versus the last four. No runs. Well, the guys they're hoping, and Hatcher, one of them, Pedro Baez, Yimmy Garcia, all have the equipment to be really good setup men or back end of the bullpen in high leverage situation. But now they've got to develop and become those guys at the big league level, which, you know, they're leaning on young players to become that. But the equipment is there, as you've seen from Hatcher. He's come in tonight, pounding that strike zone. We saw 96 with the fastball, the really good changeup. Garcia, Pedro Baez, similar from a stuff standpoint. But again, they've got to continue to develop that. And these guys need to step up to be that bridge to their great closer. Fouled back by Span. Follow live baseball with the MLB.com and Bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com and Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Top eight at Dodger Stadium. Sunday night baseball on ESPN. Chris Hatcher trying to protect a two run lead. Kenta Maeda, seven innings, just one run. On four hits, so he's now thrown 19 innings in three starts and has given up one run. Bouncer to short, routine for Seeger, a little bit of a low throw, but Gonzalez to his knees to make the play two down. 48,911 in attendance here tonight at Dodger Stadium. And 
You can't have a nicer day or a nicer evening. Well, you live here. You know this. <laughs> this is how it is all the time, huh? It was a lot cooler <laughs> earlier this week. You guys rolling the town, and it got hot. 90 degrees, yeah. I think, time first pitch came around. Still plays, doesn't it? Oh, Still man. pretty. Beautiful view. Not a bad office. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike on Joe Panic, who is responsible for the only Giants run tonight, hit a home run in the third inning. We'll be back here again middle of May, May the 15th. Dodgers will host the Cardinals on a Sunday night game. Hatcher looking for a 1 2 3 8, trying to make sure that Kenley Jansen isn't needed until the ninth. Dave Roberts looking sounding pretty comfortable as the new manager of the L.A. Dodgers. Boy they just cannot get together. Looks like Hatcher won the uh, the debate. <laughs> He's going to get to throw the pitch he wants to. He wants to throw. As I think it should be. Yep. Especially with pitchers, you never want to make them do something they don't want to do. You hear that about play by play? Guys oh, very much so. <laughs> very temperamental <laughs> lot. <laughs> Don't tell Dan what to do. <laughs> I'm <gonna> keep trying. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> One, two again. Down and away, two and two. Now the count on panic with Buster Posey waiting on deck should the inning continue. Hatcher was just cruising, too, through Pagan and Span, lighting up the radar gun, <laughs> radar gun 95 96. It'll be interesting to see if he does lose panic here with Buster Posey representing the tie run, tie run if they would go to Jansen. You would think they would. We'll never know. Inning over. He gets his three up, three down inning. Still 3 1 Dodgers here in L.A.
Got some moves. 3-1 Dodgers bottom eight. Big moment of this game. Jock Peterson with a two-run home run at the bottom of the fifth. He's explosive, especially on the fastball. But look at the launch speed, 101 miles per hour, 95-mile-an-hour pitch. But the key for him is the launch angle, 32 degrees. This is his M.O. He has a great swing path for that pitch to get underneath it and launch it, which has been the difference in this game. They added a run in the seventh inning, a 3-1 lead now as the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the eighth. Josh Osich still on the mound for the Giants. Chase Utley leads it off. Utley has popped up, struck out, and had a base hit. He'll be followed by Corey Seager, then Justin Turner. Looking ahead to the ninth for the Giants. Heart of the order, Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, Brandon Belt. Bouncer towards second, charged by Panic, underhands it in time. One down. Well, don't forget some great games coming your way on ESPN this week. Tomorrow night, it'll be the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals, another one of the game's great rivalries, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Wednesday night, the Tigers and the Royals, and then a week from tonight, we'll bring you the Red Sox and the Astros here on Sunday Night Baseball. Jansen continues to warm in anticipation of a, an opportunity here in the ninth inning. Corey Seager is the batter, one for three. You know who he reminds me of, guys? Corey Seager, that is. John Oliver. I mean, obviously a shortstop. But but if John Olerud throw threw right-handed, he probably would have played shortstop too. But very similar in the box. And, for a guy that's 10 days away from his 22nd birthday, there is a real maturity to his game. He plays like a veteran player. He plays like a quality veteran hitter. You touched on the home run he hit off of Lopez last night. Tough lefty yeah. down the way, out the front door to straightaway center field. And from all I've seen, and I've watched him a lot early on in the season here, defensively, he is a Incredibly steady at shortstop. I don't think there's any need to to move him off of that position anytime soon. Talk about him maybe going to third one day. He can really play short too. Do you think a part of that maturity, man, you know this, is being he knows at, nothing about maturity. Well, not maturity. <laughs> You'll sorry. have to Let rephrase me the question. With being a, bro yeah. a brother, okay? <laughs> I wasn't going with the maturity, oh, okay. but being a brother, having sorry. having big bro Kyle Seeger. Playing the bigs, you know, even from from a young age, being able to emulate someone that's older than you, kind of figure out how to go about your business. Do you think there's a little bit of credit that goes into having someone that plays? Crawford on the first two down. No question. I think it's definitely something that's probably been a, a benefit to him, but I think it's in his DNA. I mean, I just think it's who this person is, who this player is. You know, you get around him, he's so big, too. He's going to be a really good one. Oh, Josh Osich did, Osich did a great job tonight for the Giants. To the pen goes Bruce Bochy for a right-hander as Justin Turner comes up.
TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Right hander George Contos is into the game now for the Giants. Had a great year last year. Four and four with an ERA of 233 in 73 appearances. He comes on with two outs and the base is empty here in the bottom of the eighth to try to retire Justin Turner. With the Giants trailing three to one and Kenley Jansen looming large in that Dodger bullpen. Turner's 0 for 2 with a walk. And a pop up on the first pitch. Inning over. So we will go to the ninth. The Dodgers three outs away from a victory tonight and a series victory. Ken Lee Jansen coming out of the pen to face the best the Giants have to offer. Back here at Dodger Stadium, Kenta Maeda, another good start, gives up one run in seven innings. Jock Peterson with the biggest hit of the game, a two-run home run in the bottom of the fifth, gave him a two-to-one lead. It's now 3-1 Dodgers. We're going to the ninth. Here at Dodger Stadium, and Kenley Jansen comes out of the pen for L.A. He is big, and he is tough to hit. A ton of swings and misses, a ton of strikeouts, but he's going to face the three, four, five hitters in the Giants lineup, beginning with the Buster Posey. 0 for his last 18, but 5 for 13 in his career against Jansen. High ball one. Posey, Pence, and Belt. Adrian Gonzalez over for a look but it's back in the seats. Jansen has had 80 saves in his last two years and he has put up ridiculous strikeout numbers in his career almost 14 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. Not a lot of mystery to what he's doing he's coming in throwing hard he's got that natural kind of cut on his fastball he'll challenge you in the top of the strike zone. And it, that last pitch is a good indication of just the life on the pitch. Looked like a good pitch for Pose to hit. He's just a little bit late, a little bit off the barrel. 
Hits it hard into left field, a base hit. Leadoff man aboard, and the tying run will come to the plate. Watch where this pitch is. We'll look at where Grandal set up. You can see this pitch just leaks right over the plate where Posey does a good job. You mentioned he's 0 for his last 18. He just simplifies things here. You watch with his swing, just stays nice and close to his body, gets to contact. He's not trying to hit a home run. He's just trying to put barrel on ball. That pitch was incredibly straight, not something you usually see. You usually always got that run or that cut on that pitch. Ball stayed straight, and Posey knows what to do with a straight fastball. Here's Hunter Pence, one for two with a walk. And he takes a cutter over the outside edge for a called strike 0 and 1. Brandon Belt waiting on deck. Matt Duffy is behind him. 3 1 Dodgers in the ninth inning. A called strike, says Alfonso Marquez. It's 0 and 2. Pence was checking whether it was called or a swing. Looked like from the gesture by Marquez, it was a called strike. You see that just run back to the inside corner. That cut fastball, he started him away. There, that one off the plate. There's really no way you would offer at that as a right handed hitter. And he's able to bring it back to the corner. And now he's challenged him on both sides of the plate coming back in. And I'll tell you what, that's 92, but when it's up in the zone like that, it might as well be 98 because it is so hard to catch up to something when it's at your letters versus down in the zone. You can get your barrel down a lot easier. You can catch up to something hard and up in the zone. Count remains 0-2 on Pence. I'd see him take a little off and slider it off the plate now away. A couple times you've set him up in. There goes Grandal. Chopper to short. Shovel for one on to first, not in time. Pence aboard on a fielder's choice. A really good execution there by Jansen. Two perfect cut fastballs up in the zone, in on the hands of Hunter Pence. Opened up that outside part of the plate. This ball probably just a skosh off the outside corner. Pence with his speed, no chance for the Dodgers to turn that, but excellent execution by Jansen after giving up the leadoff single. See Pence just a little bit out in front. A good speed able to easily beat it. So runner at first one out now and the batter is Belt. As you can see one for eight in his career against Jansen. The shift is on for the Dodgers. A little cat and mouse between Gonzalez and Pence. Belt with some pop represents the tying run. Big gap at a right center field. Thompson shading Belt over towards the opposite field, the left center. If it holds up, Maeda would get the win. Samarja, who pitched well, would take the loss. about Maeda three starts 19 innings one run what a way to start his major league career foul ball and a painful one at that I mean that shades of Mariano Rivera yeah. right there that's just a cutter boring in on the hands of a left handed hitter. And again, he's not afraid to challenge you up in the strike zone keenly, and that's off the inside of that right knee. That's one of those that be sore when you wake up in the morning, but just again, after that leadoff hit, a straight fastball in the heart of the plate, he's done nothing but execute here to these next two really good hitters for the Giants. So Jansen way out in front 0 and 2. With a runner at first one out here in the ninth inning. Yeah. 
The other way, but foul. Trying to shake off the pain and help his team somehow against one of the toughest ninth inning guys around. Well, he just keeps shaking off Grandal. Well, the Giants are a fastball hitting team, but Belt is the best probably on this team sitting fastball. He's late right now, but I think eventually he catches up. So you wonder whether it's something off the plate, something a little off speed. Sports Center coming your way next here on ESPN immediately following the conclusion of the ball game. Dodgers up on the top step, two outs away from a win. Outside. And Jansen again just throws fastball, that little cutting fastball, occasional slider will take some off. So you wonder what he was shaking about. Well, he wanted to climb the ladder a little more, and you saw Grandal there give that high target. That's what he was waiting for. It was all a location thing that he was trying to shake him to. Caught by Utley for the second out. And the Dodgers are an out away from taking a series from the Giants. Matt Duffy will be the batter. We give so much credit to hitters for watching film, watching video, being able to study their opponents. Kenley Jansen is that in the reverse. He knows these hitters. He watches film. He watches film of other pitchers. He debuted in baseball as a catcher, and so he's learned and developed throughout the years in figuring out how to best handle these situations. On their feet here at Dodger Stadium. 3-1 L.A. ninth inning and an out away from a win. Matt Duffy standing between the Dodgers in a victory tonight. And a strike. Duffy's 0 for 3. Dodgers have survived a ton of injuries in the early going this season. They're playing some pretty good baseball here out of the shoot. Didn't get the call and it's one and one. And Grandal kind of quietly turned around, had a couple of words with Marquez. Grandal's done a good job all night of the pitches, the sliders, or the cut fastballs going away, of catching it before it breaks entirely. And as Kazone showed you, that was a strike on the corner. Dodgers don't get the call. Pence took second on defensive indifference. Side ball two. I don't think the Dodgers want to mess with Brandon Crawford at all. He's in the on deck circle. He's already stung him once with a game winning home run this year. That was last week in San Francisco. Jansen wants to end it right here. Maeda hoping for a win. And a ground ball to second. And that'll do it. Peterson hits the big home run. Jansen gets the save. Maeda picks up the victory. And the Dodgers beat the Giants 3 to 1 to take the series from their rivals.
They'll meet again. You know they'll have a lot more meaningful games this year. Still 12 more are coming between the Giants and the Dodgers. Good game here tonight as the Dodgers win three to one. My eight of the win. So March of the loss. Jansen the save for Aaron Boone, Jessica Mendoza, Buster Olney, and our ESPN Sunday Night Crew. I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching and so long from Dodger Stadium. Let's send you back to the studio because Sports Center is coming your way right now.